Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to get singles for all your Force of Will and other trading card games, as well as these amazing patrons. Thank you for your support. Enjoy the video. Hey there, Rulers. Welcome back to Ruler School. This is TMO73, bringing you a feature match for this week between myself on an Adam Sykart deck I like to call Adam Roulette that was designed by Min Ha, a very, very unique and greedy Adam Sykart list that I am playing against Paul Klute, who is playing um, Alter Layla Lich. Uh, so using the new kind of Alter Layla combo that came out in Awakening of the Ancients um, to ramp Darkness Stones very quickly and kind of establish a kind of a utility um, using Alter itself. So the Adam Sykart deck is very greedy. It has a lot of cards in it that were um, designed to not be castable from the hand, and it is just designed to purely abuse the Adam Sykart Master Rune um, from the new set. So we'll go ahead and see how this goes. I am going to be on the draw for game one. Uh, so we'll see what happens. So it looks like we have Alter, um, Joan to Arc. I believe there's an Alter in there, at least a Layla. First stone, we see that Darkness Magic stone, and out comes the Layla. It's a pretty standard first turn for this deck now. It really wants to be able to ramp those stones pretty quickly. Um, on my side, you see a Treasure Tree, and we'll energize to play Broodhild Shield. This is because we want to protect Treasure Tree at all costs during his turn, because we're trying to pull off the turn two Master Rune um, for a high amount of value. So it goes to turn two. Tank for two, uh, get that sacrificial altar out, and we're going to immediately sacrifice it to the Layla. Interesting choice here. Typically, they've been doing um, power of immortality, like waiting till they get the power of immortality so that they can bring the Layla right back and get two stones. Um, but just choosing to sacrifice it right there for one gets him one basic darkness stone and a counter on his sacrificial altar. So we'll see what he does with that other one. It looks like he has a skeleton horde in hand, so he can play that. And that gives him another potential two counters on the, the altar. Second stone on my turn. We'll use uh, the effect of tree. to, And we'll discard an Ushua from hand. Because it's impossible for that card to be cast from hand. And we cast Traveler from hand as well. We reveal a Mistletane, another tree, and an Anubis. Uh, and because those are three different costs, I can put all of them straight into the field because the Master Rune was awakened. Um, so then the Mistletane will trigger, and I can go revive something that's two or less. I don't have anything that's two or less. Um, but ultimately, I get to put a five drop, a one drop, and an eight drop all into play uh, here on turn two. Uh, now, when Anubis is in play, um, he, all of his cards that he sends to the graveyard can't um will go to remove from game instead so this is actually helpful because it shuts down the skeleton horde only being able to give him one token it helps him uh it prevents him from being able to use layla it makes it so that um life suffering blade becomes much more expensive because it specifically says if a card hits grave so really an ideal uh card to hit on turn two off for the atom deck for this matchup it is completely random and we have to look at the top three and hope we get three high value cards um but it is a great payoff when it works. Calling another stone here, going up to four. So he looks like he has an asthma here in hand. He's a Joan to Arc. Um, he kind of has to be careful here. Because again, he knows that he's playing against white, um, which does have some removal stuff. And he's also, he doesn't have that ability to kind of combo off and really ramp up high like he needs. Playing Freed from the Altar here, which lets him for one and 400 life go search for a Darkness Resonator. 
All those ladles in his deck are essentially useless as long as Anubis is on board. And the beauty is with the Brunhild's shield, I can instant speed sacrifice it to give any of the creatures on my side of the, any of the um, resonators on my side of the field eternal. Choosing to grab the Skeleton Horde here off the Freed from the Altar, perhaps just so that he can um, play it, play a Gene, and then sacrifice Altar to go get a second Gene um, would be my potential thought here, uh, so that he immediately sets up like double Gene with Swiftness and that kind of stuff. Um, still seems a little bit of a greedy play, especially since none of my creatures are currently um, tapped, but maybe it's just to set up a block wall that the uh, Mistletane can't swing through. Um, would be an option here because if there's two genes then even if I would try to destroy them with Mistletane they wouldn't be destroyed um, so it does prevent uh, protect him that way just passing the turn after the playing the two though with having the tree and another um, Copy of the Traveler in hand, discarding another Ushua, because again, it is uncastable from hand. Another Awakened Traveler here on turn two. That's going to resolve. We hit a Welser, a Protection of the Angels, which can't do anything, and then the three drop Quick Cast Angel. So they are two different costs, so they both get to come in. So this is particularly devastating um, with the Welser, um, because uh, I have... It is a chant rune, uh, so if I can protect the Welser into the next turn, and I apologize for the shake, um, if I can protect the Welser until the next turn, um, then uh, I can potentially get double awakening off of the cast of that card. Again, I apologize for the screen shake here. Swinging in with the Mistletane, knowing that there's the altar here, um, So Paul could instant speed sack the altar to go get a gene and block with it, but instead he just chooses to take the 12 damage. So then we'll pay one and we'll play an Apostle of the Sun just to help us kind of ramp up. Uh, we don't have a tree anymore, so we need uh, to get to five will um, next turn, and the Apostle is the one that helps us do that. This also gives us access to um, our runes. So to be able to protect the uh, Mistletane effectively. So Paul's sitting at five stones here. So we are seeing the altar get sacrificed here to see that second gene. While deciding exactly how he wants to approach this because my life is so high as the atom deck at this point in time i'm probably just going to accept any damage that he wants to uh, swing uh even at the mistletane potentially um just let it happen um the only thing would be potentially blocking with the angel just so he can't kill mistletane this turn um but that would involve him um tapping down both of his genes so that's a little unlikely he does have five will open which gives him quite a few options. Um, 
he has demon division it looks like he does have a belial so he's one short there and his life total is not low enough he might be just trying to wait maybe kind of set up a situation where i can't quite close out the game and push him into a belial range or just set up a little defensive wall so that belial can come down and nuke the board in the post Paul ultimately just choosing to pass the turn here, leaving up five open will. Darkness has a lot of instant speed removal, um, so it's not necessarily a bad thing for him to just leave up all of that open will. I move into combat and then realize that the genes won't be destroyed, so we'll swing in with the 800 because I've declared my have to go into combat. So if I take it back and neither of us do anything, then I'd forfeit combat for the turn. So I'll just take the safe swing in the air for eight. Um, and then we will use Traveler. It is a chance slash rune, so Welser does get to copy it, and it is awakened, um, so I get to do the top three twice. We see a Brunhild shield, an Ares, and a mess and an Apostle. Um, we'll grab the Apostle and the Ares, so the Ares will suddenly make all of my light resonators plus two plus two, uh, and then also um, produce two floating white, which is really helpful. And then the second one goes off, and I get a tree. Uh, a flourishing hope which goes to the bottom of the deck and then a mosasaurus um, so i can target three of his stones and say if you do tap them this turn you're going to be locked out um, so like i said a lot a lot of big stuff that ultimately we can't cost on a uh, can't cast on a mono white stone base um, but when you get a lot of value off of the um at a master rune it, it sometimes just pays off Knowing that I don't have a way to deal with the Joan to arcs right now, the safest bet would actually be for me to swing with the Brunhild shield. It is a 200 flyer in the air now because of the Ares, but I don't think I quite catch it. Oh, no, I'm swinging in with the Anubis. Um, try to see if I can push for finishing off the game here, um, seeing if he decides to try to block with something. Push him down to 100 life. We're gonna block with the Skeleton Horde. That's gonna go to the Remove from Game so he doesn't get a token. And now that we have uh, only two things on board, we're gonna go ahead and swing with Misty for 14. I do still have two floating white will here. So the Aries enter. Paul recognizing that if this uh, this is potentially walking into a lethal turn here, the 14 from Brunhild or from Misty, and then the two from the um, Shield. He's going to use um, one of the stones that I locked down and two floating, um, and use a. Um, Jet Black Wings here. So this is just to prevent damage and wipe out as many as my of my small drops as possible. Um, this would only kill the three one drops in the back row. Um, ultimately, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to save Treasure Tree using the shield. This is because Treasure Tree is going to produce me three White Will next turn to be able to potentially um, answer whatever Paul might be playing in the interim. So 
So Deccan Paul down to eight, passing the turn here. He's only gonna be at five will again, because one will is uh, locked. Um, but he does have um, a Belial in hand. Uh, so he only has to pay three for it. And with the Belial being the third resonator, the two genes are gonna get to survive the Belial swings as well. So this puts him in actually in a pretty good position to kind of crack back. So plays the Belial. And then at this point in time, we're responding to the cast of the Belial, I believe. So we're gonna use Treasure Tree here to produce triple white discarding a uh, Ushua, because again, uncastable if it's in the hand. Using Ring of Eternal to protect the Mistletane. The Mistletane will then trigger, and I get to go bring back a um, Resonator from the Grave, so I can bring back the Shield. And I can then banish the shield to protect one other resonator. And I believe the best option here is for me to protect Anubis. really debating what to kind of hit here one other option would be i have the floating white so i could use it to cast um the sand awakening um because it only costs one colorless uh and i could then i could banish it protect something cast sand awakening um to bring it back again and banish it again ultimately probably would protect the welser um at that point um but uh, ultimately we're gonna choose to protect the Anubis, mainly because we just don't wanna deal with any graveyard, more graveyard shenanigans potentially with things like um, uh, power of immortality or anything like that. And even double gene wouldn't be able to kill the Anubis even if he swung in. So at that point in time, we lose four resonators in response to the Belial um, uh, board wipe. We go down to 36 uh, and then we're back at Paul. Paul having, I believe, still has access to Astema, although he can't cast it this turn. Oh no, maybe he can. No, he is locked out of Astema. So only two will up right now. He does have a Ray. Uh, looks like other cards in hand that he could cast at this moment aren't particularly accessible. I'm not sure what his runes are either. Not having access to Alter does make things a little bit awkward for him. So I think at this time, he's deciding whether or not he wants to swing with the genes, but I think it does ultimately make the most sense um, to just... Um, maybe potentially even just play the Ray and pass. Yeah, it looks like double uh, Astema, Ray, Alcide in hand. So in that point, potentially just play the Ray Pass. And then using the two of their floating at the end of the turn, we'll cast Karmic Retribution um, just to be able to revive um, the, uh, we choose to revive the Apostle. And the reason why we're reviving the Apostle here is because we want the will. Um, we want to be at five will uh, because we have a way to get around all of these um, Joan to Arcs uh, just by flipping and having access to the extra will from um, the Adam Psychard here. So Adam Psychard's gonna flip. 
I invert the stone, not that it matters. Um, because I haven't used any of my flourishing hopes at this point in time. We can cast Sandstorm here, um, which can tap down one of the Jonda arcs. chooses to block the Anubis with the Jonda arc. We say that's fine. It's actually better than what we were hoping for. Um, we would have thought that he would have potentially blocked with the Belial to stop himself from getting killed. So we say that's fine. I'll take the, the minus seven counters. Swing in 12. If he goes to block with the Belial, his plan is to use Power of Immortality on it um, to bring it back. Um, the problem that we're forgetting here is that Anubis will make Power of Immortality not do anything. Uh, and so upon realizing that, um, Paul's just going to go ahead and scoop it up and we're going to go into game two. As we go into the next game, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so you're notified when all of our videos goes live, and consider supporting the channel by being a member here on YouTube or by checking it out on Patreon for all the cool exclusive perks that come with supporting us. Thank you guys so much, let's go to the next game. So in game two here, uh, Paul once again putting me on the draw. He does have that altar or Layla in hand. Ultimately, just passing on turn one. Um, we do see a turn one uh, tree come down here. Um, whether or not it's, uh, but we don't have the shields to kind of follow up. I mean, we do have the shield. Um, no, it doesn't look like we actually have the shield in hand, unfortunately. Ball deciding to use that turn one then to say, um, well, we'll try and kill it with um, Sword of the New Moon. And at that point in time, we're going to burn the Energize uh, to do Ring of Legend to keep it alive. Because ultimately, we want to try to be casting uh, the Master Rune on turn two every single time if possible. Out comes the Layla, and then choosing to pass there, calling our stone, and going for the turn two as well. We can discard um, a Mistletane off the top here. Harder to cast for the deck. Um, we did have a Traveler from hand. We hit a tree, an Ushua, and a Flourishing Hope. So Flourishing Hope doesn't resolve. Um, the tree and the Ushua do, though. And then Ushua gets to look at the top five cards, put a Resonator of cost five or less into play. Um, ultimately hitting a pretty poor Ushua there. We just hit a shield of Brunhild. Still pretty good because we ultimately get access to that instant speed um, Eternal. Uh, and as well as a potential next turn with the tree, casting it again uh, next turn from the rune deck. Um, but we were obviously hoping to get uh, something a little bit bigger, um, like an Ares to be able to cast cards from hand. We're going to swing a swing in with Ushua. He blocks with the Layla, goes to Grave. He gets a stone. A little bit of a misplay here. Um, 
if we were executing this in a tournament. However, you're going to see us catch it here in a second. Paul completely forgot that he had that open will open, uh, so he could cast uh, the Sandstorm, or sorry, the Power of Immortality to bring it back. Ultimately, just for the sake of showing what these decks are designed to do, I say, you know what, that's fine. Let's assume that you could play the Power of Immortality. Um, Layla will go to Grave, come back and rest it. He gets a stone, goes up to three stones. And then at that point in time, also knowing that he's potentially going to get an altar, you say, you know what, well, if the, she's out on the board, let's go ahead and just sandstorm her away. Now, you can go up to four stones, go to five stones, but let's clear your board. Don't give you access to a, a free thing to sack to altar. If you're going to play altar, it's going to take half your turn, and you're going to have to really commit to it. Going into his turn here, so he'll be up to five stones. We see a perfect matrix in hand, actually using the new Lich Master rune. And choosing to use it, so perfect matrix here on the Ushua, totally makes sense. It is a very large beater coming at his face. Uh, and if I happen to draw, uh, especially knowing that he, he knows that I'm going to see a master rune next turn, if that Ushua was still there um, and I got an Anubis off the top or even another Ushua, like he's just going to be facing down a lot of damage that, that he just can't keep up with. Um, so at that point in time, just plays another Layla to back it up. I had no other red resonators in hand um, and we move on. I couldn't have used Eternal in response because ultimately, and that was a misplay there, I'll catch it moving to the RFG. Um, I couldn't use it um, eternal because it just says remove from game. It doesn't um, kill the resonator. So we're casting from deck. Uh, we hit an Ares, double Ares, unfortunately. So pretty suboptimal travelers here. We had another eternal access, but we have double white thanks to Ares here. So we can kind of ramp up um, or see exactly what we want to do. Use one of the whites, say, you know what, let's play another treasure tree. So we have all these one drops and we can start swinging in the air with the shields. So I swing in for two in the air and then pass the turn there, letting the other two floating essentially whiff at this point, um, but there's really no reason for me to use it. Just to use it, especially if Adam is in flipped, I do wanna be able to make use of him if I do flip him next turn. Going to six stones for Paul. Does have access to a Belial if he wants to. The altar does come down though. Layla getting sacrificed here. Gets him a, another stone. He doesn't get the double sacrifice because he's already used power of immortality, but still helps him ramp up a little bit. But then he can use that extra stone and do an awakened... Um, March the Undead and just bring both the Laylos back. So then he can immediately sacrifice both of them to the altar again, go up to three um, counters on it and generate two more basic darkness stones. Using some of that extra will to play a Skeleton Horde. So at this point in time, he does have access to um, two, three, four, a five drop. So he could quick cast, get a Athenia back out of deck if he really wants to. Um, choosing to sacrifice one of the uh, Layla's just so he has access to double um, will on my turn before I decide to do anything here. So in hand, you see I have the three drop quick cast. I've got um, Mistletane, or I think maybe even double Mistletane, and then a protection of the angels. Choosing to call stone here, I think that's actually the incorrect play line. The proper play line, I think, would have been to use um, use the tree to flip Adam and have just a uh, three floating will. Instead, choosing to cast the Mistletane using the tree, um, leaving myself with double white. Swinging in the air for two. Um, but then in response to no blocks, because he has no flyers, we're going to go ahead and use um, making the next one double, you know, white and one cheaper. And we can make um, 
Sand Awakening free. And if that's a misplay, I apologize. But um, we get down to um, that. That gives her plus two, and then Ares then suddenly makes all of my res light resonators an additional plus four. So I do hit him in the air for six, and then another four. Um, and then because I cast a rune from Rune Deck, Misty gets to revive the three drop angel. We swing in with Ares for ten. At this point in time, we see a pretty solid move in response to with the altar. We see Cycle of Death. Um, so Cycle of Death resolves, and then he can just sacrifice things to alter um, and make me sacrifice creatures in response. So weirdly enough, against this deck, having the Brunhild shields, it's a little bit backwards um, because what's happening here is he's going to block. Um, so he blocks here, which I think is odd, um, and then it dies. I sacrifice a Brunhild's um, shield. And then every creature he, and then at the end of the turn, he's going to sacrifice the token. Um, I sacrifice the three drop angel. He sacrifices the Layla. I sacrifice the three, the Brunhild shield. So the Brunhild shields and the revives from Mistletane kind of did what they needed to get around cycle of death. Um, and it also, it does ramp Paul up quite a bit, um, but I'm still uh, threatening quite a bit here. I've got the protection of the angels in hand as well. Um, and I have um, Karmic Retribution if I need to, uh, so that I can even revive uh, next turn, um, or even revive the three drop um, during his turn if I need to. So at this point in time, we have plenty of will. Um, we're gonna pay the full six and just hard cast of Belial. The irony here is that he can just hard uh, that he can just get a Belial in response, uh, you know, like sacrifice that Belial, get a six counter on um, altar, and then sacrifice the altar to get another Belial. Um, so at this point in time, the game is practically Paul's. Uh, there's very little my deck can do to reestablish, um, especially after having spent all these runes. Uh, that he's not just going to be able to immediately board wipe. Um, but we are going to see the two white come out, Karmic Retribution, bring back Brunhild's shield, and then sacrifice it to uh, protect the Mistletane. So we're going to at least swing in for some damage and see what we top deck. Um, he does, I do take the one from Ares dying after the Brunhild finally does enter. But you see he still has, I believe, three open will to be able to do something if he wishes, and at the same time, he could just go and grab an Athenia right now, um, though I'm not entirely sure if Paul's deck is playing Athenians at this point. March the Undead comes down. He gets to go grab two more Layla's if he wants, um, but instead grabs, I think he only has one darkness, basic Darkness Stone left, so he grabs Layla and Skeleton Horde, which makes the most sense. Um, chooses not to swing here. Um, he's just going to leave the Belial open. Go to my turn. Uh, swing in with um, Mistletane. He says, that's fine. I'll take, uh, take the 12. There's no real threat there. Going into his turn, he's got 10 stones here. I believe all the stones left in his deck are um, stone. I think the one stone that does remain in his deck is a basic darkness magic stone. Um, so I don't know why he didn't sacrifice uh, it to Layla before calling stone or, or thinking about calling stone. We're going to see a freed from the altar come down here. So it pays four, it takes himself down to 12. Um, but he can just go grab an Athenia, or sorry, an Astema here, and, and play multiple Astemas uh, and just drain uh, to get himself back up to a reasonable life total. Um, at this point in time, with what he has on board, um, he could um, play double Astema, go up to 22, swing, get me down to 27, um, 23, 
uh, pay twice. Like, it would be pretty much lethal because um, I don't have any life gain really. Um, so down to 34 up to um, 17. He could swing in here with the Belial, take me down to 22, 18, go get another, play another Astima from hand, double drain me, and then sacrifice everything to get Belial and probably do lethal that way. Um, it's very combo heavy, the math is very intricate, um, but also he doesn't really need to do that because he's certainly um, controlling the board state here, especially having, I believe, um, six. And he's just going to go ahead and cast the hard cast the Belial anyway. Um, from hand. So at this point in time, knowing that he has these Belials, I take three from this, go down to 31. Um, knowing that he has an instant speed Belial, I actually take six from it because it's two Belials and swings in, takes me down to 16. Um, he could even just go get an Astima at this point um, and then uh, drain it. But I'm going to go ahead and draw, see it's an uncastable card and say, nope, we're done. Scoop it and we'll go to game three. So in game three here, we're finally going to get to see the Atom deck go first. Um, ultimately, again, the plan of this deck is to always, always, always cast the Master Rune on turn two, or at the absolute latest, um, turn three. Um, we, we really do not want to be casting it any later than that, because we're, we're start to lose um, the value from it, or, or it's harder for us to recover from bad um, travelers if we don't uh, cast it super early. So we do see the tree come down on turn one. I like to joke that this is putting the coin in the slot machine um, and hopefully we get it to resolve. Paul calling his first stone here uh, and just has the way to kill it with the sword of new moon. Um, and I'm like, I don't I don't want to produce white with it right now. I want to keep it engraved in case I have to revive it. Then energizes into Layla. Um, going into my turn here, we did keep a backup strategy, which is to have double apostle. Um, so these will be able to protect each other hopefully with what's in hand um and then um next turn you know use both of them in the three stones to be able to cast the master rune and hopefully get some pretty significant value off of it paul getting his second stone here no altar to make use of the and i'm certainly not going to block or swing in with these small creatures so he does just decide to play another layla and then follow it up with a skeleton horde going into my turn we see that third stone Then unfortunately we don't have one in hand, um, so we're just going to cast it from the rune deck, the Traveler here, look at the top three and hope we get some pretty good value off of it. We see a uh, shield, which is great, a Mistletane, and then unfortunately Protection of the Angels. So the Mistletane is really great here um, because it lets us revive the treasure tree. If we need to, um, we could just cast, um, you know, we can cast Sandstorm for free uh, and kill those two and then revive the treasure tree so that we have protection will um, during his turn. So, yes, he is going to get two stones here, go up to five on his turn three. Um, but we're also sitting at three floating will and going into our turn three, we will be at um, going into our turn four. I apologize. We'll be going into eight will a lot. uh It's a pretty interesting balance here um, between the two decks in terms of will production and, and what to do with it. All seed coming down here, getting to grab the Layla back. The all seed giving him an interesting option to be able to um, sacrifice uh, to be able to kill things um, with the altar. And what the interesting thing is with the Layla, that means it also produces him stones. Um, we use the tree here, um, a little bit greedy, to quick cast in uh, the three drop angel because we just want pressure. Um, so we're actually going to go ahead and flip Adam super early here using the um, two uh, um, apostles and the one stone. Um, we'll swing in the air for eight. Since that's fine, I'll take it. We'll swing in the bot on the ground for 12. Um, so this will be able to kill anything that he's swinging with. 
or that he blocks with because he doesn't have access to any Jonda arcs and put him at a two grand, um, which essentially just means we're, we're putting him on a two turn clock with the flyer and the misty. We're saying we're going to hit you twice this turn, then we're going to hit you twice the next turn and just close the game that way. So in response to the Mistletane swing, he's actually going to um, use the All Seed here um, to sacrifice the Skeleton Horde and the um, and the Layla, and also use Cycle of Death before that, so that when the two creatures die, I have to sacrifice two things. Um, so then we will be sacrificing the two units. Those have to sacrifice, so we sacrifice the two Ramp guys. All Seed's going to try to um, target. Um, or we also banish Burnhill's shield to give eternal. Um, and then he's going to try to, um, so the, obviously he doesn't kill. Then he tries to block with the Skeleton Nord token. It gets killed. Um, and then uh, we can, in response to um, having to sacrifice a unit, uh, we can do Sand Awakening, pump it up for even more damage, uh, bring back one of the Resonators, and then sacrifice that to the Altar of Death um, so that we successfully swing in that point for um, the 14. So taking him down to 18. So at this point in time, I'm feeling pretty comfortable, um, especially with him being kind of pretty behind um, Resonator wise. Um, and again, if he wants to play Belial here, it would cost him six, um, which would leave him with one open. So pretty minimal stuff to kind of work through. And I still have Adam. Um, and the other thing to note is too, is I do have access to Ring of Immortality, which weirdly enough in this deck um, with Brute with Mistletane on field actually becomes eternal twice if I have a Brunhild shield. So this is what we're gonna see. Like he feels like he has to wipe the board here because otherwise he's just gonna die. Um, we're going to see a um, Power of Immortality combo with um, attempting to kill the All Seed. So the All Seed will come back into play tapped, get to Malayla, the Brunhild's gonna nuke, or the um, Belial's gonna nuke the board. He's trying to clear both of my resonators off so that he has a safety net. So what we see here is the Ring of Eternal gets cast in response to the casting of Belial. Uh, so then the Mistletane goes off, I get to bring back Shield, uh, and Shield can then banish to protect um, the Angel. So at this point in time, both of my units have Eternal, or my Resonators have Eternal. Um, so then the All Seed is going to die, I take 100, it comes back in tapped, um, and because I cast a rune, I can use Adam Psychart to tap down the Belial as well. So I guess I do take more damage than that. I was doing it in response to the Belial trigger. Um, and then all he has is a Layla. So I take the damage from stuff dying, but my stuff doesn't die. He's tapped out. And then at that point in time, all he has is a Layla, um, which my stuff can just swing through for lethal. Paul admits that, uh, recognizes the uh, difference there, uh, and then scoops it up. So there you guys have it. That is the match. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Huge thanks to Minha for sending the deck list for this Adam deck. Tons of fun. And also for Paul for sitting down with his ultra list for the match. Deck profiles, will, both lists will be up later this week. So I hope you guys come back and check that out. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you're notified when they go live. And until next time, this is DMO73 saying class dismissed.